Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at how Lisandro Martinez will fit into Ten Hag's Manchester United. Is he the new defensive midfielder, or is he another centre back? A special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Sofa Score, who make all these videos possible. But anyway, let's get this party started. After much negotiation, Manchester United have signed Argentine defender Lisandro Martinez for a reported fee of 50 million euros. Whilst he's made his name in Europe as a centre-back for Ajax, his skill set suggests that he could play further forward. And with United still lacking a defensive midfielder, could he change positions? First up, we've got to discuss his strengths and weaknesses. Standing at 5'9", Martinez isn't the tallest footballer, but it does mean that he's very mobile and agile. He also reads the game superbly well and is aggressive in his challenges but his standout attribute is his passing and his ability to instruct and dictate his team's build-up defensively martinez isn't a physical monster but he plays with his head his speed and agility make him very comfortable at tracking opposition players when they've got the ball often martinez will pressure an opponent's back preventing them from turning then when they try and move away from the goal so that they can create a space and turn martinez follows them either by slowing the momentum of the attack or making a challenge. His aggressive style is highlighted by Sofa Score. Lisandro Martinez's 3.9 tackles plus interceptions per 90 isn't just impressive for a centre back, but it would actually rank him second in the Manchester United squad from last season. What's more impressive is that Ajax have nearly 14% more possession than United last season, giving Martinez even less opportunity to make defensive actions. Sofa Score is a great app that we use for a lot of our analysis. With data sourced from Opta, SofaScore not only provides accurate and up-to-date stats, but it also allows you to keep track of your favourite teams, players and competitions. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below to download SofaScore for free! Meanwhile, when Martinez is up against a player with a physical advantage, he stands close enough to step in, but not close enough to be pinned by the forward strength or be turned by their speed. He used this to great effect in Ajax's 4-0 win over Borussia Dortmund in last season's Champions League. In this tie, he was up against Erling Haaland, one of the most athletic and physical strikers in the world, but finished the game with eight tackles plus interceptions, and he won three out of three of his ground duels against the Norwegian international. He did this through intelligent positioning, blocking Haaland's direct route to goal while standing a yard off the forward. Then when he received with his back to goal, Martinez would step in aggressively and tackle, using his momentum to overcome Haaland's size and strength. But arguably his best moment of defending came against Haaland's speed in the 14th minute. After an Ajax attack broke down, Schultz cleared the ball into the channel for Haaland to chase. Timber can't reach the ball and Haaland has a 1v1 with Lisandro Martinez with 40 yards of space to attack. Instead of panicking, Martinez calmly backs off, blocks the route to goal whilst keeping his eye on the ball. From this position, he's able to react as Haaland cuts inside, tries to nutmeg Martinez with a defender easily recovering the ball and ending the danger. But where Lisandro Martinez really shines is on the ball. The Argentine international is one of the best ball-playing centre-backs in Europe. Not only does he have a complete range, but his technique is excellent as well. It might sound a bit simple, but his ground passes are crisp and don't bounce, whilst his long passes are driven with speed and accuracy. And where possible, Martinez tries to pass the receiver a stronger foot. This might not sound like a lot, but it can grant his passing target an extra few seconds as it makes them easier to bring the ball under control. But Martinez doesn't just keep his passing simple. He's a very good progressor. Often he uses passing to spread the ball to the left flank, breaking the opposition shape with a pass into the left half space, or he uses his long passing to switch the point of the attack to the right hand side. However, Martinez can also create chances directly. He loves a pass over the top of defenses into the right hand channel. Channel. This has proven to be highly effective for Ajax, and last season he picked out Mats Raui making an untracked run. We saw this against Groningen. With Martinez in possession, he's pressed by the striker. He avoids the pressure by exchanging passes with Alvarez and Davy Klasser before firing the ball over the top for Mats Raui to finish first time. And this isn't the only time he's done that this season. In fact, Martinez has created five chances for Mats Raui with that pass last year. Whilst not as impressive, Martinez's ground passes can be just as deadly. His confidence and his ability to escape pressure with body feints and quick change of direction gives him great composure on the ball. This sees him play with his head up. 
so when a gap appears in the defence, he's ready to play an accurate line-breaking pass. Using Instat's expected assist model, which includes second assist passes, Lisandro Martinez has a value of 5.02 from last season, at around 0.13 per 90. That's not just more than all of United centre-backs combined, but it's more than the likes of Ruben Diaz, Virgil van Dijk and Antonio Rudiger to name a few. So what does this mean for Manchester United? Lisandro Martinez's talent and skill set mean he could definitely play a more advanced role. He could fill in at left back or even defensive midfield if required. But what's important is Ten Hag's structure in possession. Martinez is at his most dangerous when he has the play ahead of him. So regardless of his starting position, expect him to be in the deepest band of players. Not only does this give him more time and space, but he'll generally have at least seven forward passing options allowing him to progress the play most frequently. What's more is that distance isn't a problem as his long pass is arguably his biggest strength. Defensively, a midfield role would make use of his aggression and awareness while providing an option for United's problem position. However, it's not a role he's played that often. All of the games when he started in defensive midfield came in the 2019-20 season, his first under Ten Hag, but since he's established himself as a centre-back. Ten Hag also has a history of playing defensive midfield capable players in his back line. Daly Blind played a number of games for Manchester United at the base of midfield, but for Ten Hag he's only played centre-back or left-back, so expect Martin Martinez to maintain his role at the heart of the defence. This role also makes use of his strength in 1v1 duels, and his agility and balance and speed make him an ideal player to cover the space in behind the defence. I know what people will say, Lisandro Martinez is too short to be a Premier League centre-back. Honestly, I think that is absolute nonsense. With the direction that modern football is heading, high defensive lines, intense man-to-man -man pressing schemes, I think small, agile, technically gifted centre-backs will become more common. And what's more is despite him being 5'9", Martinez is still very good in the air. Not only does he jump well, but he thinks before he engages in duels. This led to an impressive 64% aerial duel win rate in last season's Champions League and 71% in the Eredivisie. Meanwhile, 3.3 successful aerial duels, one per game is better than the likes of Mateus De Ligt, Rafael Varane, Ruben Diaz and Pau Torres. If Martinez is in a physical mismatch, he won't challenge aimlessly, but he'll still pressure the opponent. At the very least, it means that he can't control a long pass before Martinez will be in there with a tackle from behind. But it also means that they don't get a free header to pick out a teammate with a headed pass. Again, this is highlighted where he went up against Harlan. Ajax are 4-0 up in the 90th minute and the Dortmund goalkeeper kicks it long to Harlan. At this point, Dortmund have a 2v1 on Martinez. All Harlan has to do is beat the seven inch taller Martinez in the air and flick it onto Azard. But instead of giving it up, Martinez challenges, unbalances Harlan, forcing his header to go straight up into the air, which allows the Ajax defenders to recover and stop the attack. A world-class player in possession and a very capable defender without it, Lisandro Martinez is exactly what Manchester United have been missing at centre-back. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will Lisandro Martinez be a success at Manchester United and where do you think he will play? Let me know in the comments below and of course check out SofaScore, the app's free, it's absolutely sick. Get into the comments below and give it a download. Anyway, we'll be back next time. Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel. Oh, 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 oh,